Hey, what's up guys? Clinton here. Hey guys, Clinton here. Today we'll be checking out the Audio Track Mixer panel in Premiere Pro and showing how we can use the built-in audio plugins to make our audio sound way better. So let's get into Premiere Pro and fix my terrible sounding voice audio as an example. So here's an example section from the Legato guitar lesson video I posted about a month ago. This is the final audio. All right, so let's take a quick look at some players that have really awesome Legato. I'm sure I'm forgetting a bunch, so if I missed your favorite, just let me know in the comments. And here's what my voice sounded like with no processing on it. All right, so let's take a quick look at some players that have really awesome legato. I'm sure I'm forgetting a bunch, so if I missed your favorite, just let me know in the comments. So first things first, let's open up the audio track mixer panel in Premiere. You can do this by going up to window and selecting audio track mixer. Once we have the panel open, find and click the little arrow in the top left hand corner to expand the track mixer. From here we can see the different channels that correlate to our audio tracks in the timeline and we can add plugins, sends, and other audio mixing tools. So back to my voice track, I'll be using four common mixing tools to make it sound better and explaining what each one does in the process. So first up, let's use EQ to get rid of all the nasty frequencies in my voice. Out of the Premiere plugins, I prefer to use the parametric EQ. Grab a middle band and boost it, scrubbing around to see where the harshest areas are. All right, so let's take a quick look at some players that have really awesome legato. I'm sure I'm forgetting a bunch, so... Adjust the cue to ensure you're only cutting what is necessary to remove the harsh frequencies. Players that have really awesome legato. I'm sure I'm forgetting a bunch. Then make a large cut and bring the dB level back until you start to hear the harsh frequency again. All right, so let's take a quick look at some players that have really awesome legato. I'm sure I'm forgetting a bunch. Once you're happy with the cut, try turning the band on and off to hear the before and after. All right, so let's take a quick look at some players that have really awesome legato. Repeat this process as much as needed, but in general, the less processing you have to do, the better the result will sound. I have really awesome legato. I'm sure I'm forgetting a bunch, so if I missed your favorite, just let me know in the comments. All right, so let's take a quick look at some players that have really awesome legato. I'm sure I'm forgetting a bunch, so if I missed your favorite, just let me know in the comments. All right, so let's take a quick look at some players that have really awesome legato. I'm sure I'm forgetting a bunch, so if I missed your favorite, just let me know in the comments. All right, so let's take a quick look at some players that have really awesome legato. I'm sure I'm forgetting a bunch, so if I missed your favorite, just let me know in the comments. All right, so let's take a quick look at some players that have really awesome legato. I'm sure I'm forgetting a bunch, so if I missed your favorite. For voice audio, you can usually use a high pass filter to cut out any distracting low end rumble. really awesome legato. I'm sure I'm forgetting a bunch, so if I missed your favorite, just let me know in the comments. Lastly, you can try boosting the high end and low end with a shelf to enhance the sound if necessary. A bunch, so if I missed your favorite, just let me know in the comments. All right, so let's take a quick look at some players that have really awesome legato. I'm sure I'm forgetting a bunch, so if I missed your favorite, just let me know in the comments. Then AB the before and after by turning the EQ on and off and you may want to adjust the gain for a better comparison. I'm sure I'm forgetting a bunch, so if I missed your favorite, just let me know in the comments. All right, so let's take a quick look at some players that have really awesome legato. Next, let's try a multiband compressor. In short, compressors reduce the dynamic range of audio, reducing the volume of loud peaks for a more consistent sound, which can be pretty crucial with voice audio. A multiband compressor lets you set compression levels differently for each frequency section. If you're new to audio, this is probably a ton of information, but you can just try using my approach and see if it works for you. Listen to what each band affects by soloing it. Players that have really awesome legato. I'm sure I'm forgetting a bunch, so if I missed your favorite, just let me know in the comments. Let's try dialing in an area that is harsh or has too much frequency buildup, unsolo it, and then pull the threshold down to compress it. It, just let me know in the comments. All right, so let's take a quick look at some players that have really awesome legato. I'm sure I'm forgetting a bunch, so if I missed your favorite, just let me know in the comments. All right, so let's take a quick look at some players that have really awesome legato. I'm sure I'm forgetting a bunch, so if I missed your favorite, just let me know. Keep in mind you don't have to use every band if you don't need to. Unlike EQ, which is a static curve, multiband compressors are dynamic and change based on the audio that's fed to them 
So this can be the perfect tool for a vocal that is often changing in volume or tone. So the frequency curve of my voice now sounds better and less nasally, but the volume is still changing a lot between phrases. For this, I'll use a single band compressor to compress the entire voice track. For a vocal, you can try setting the ratio to four to one to start and reduce the threshold till you hear some heavy compression. This will let you really hear what the compressor's doing. Players that have really awesome legato. I'm sure I'm forgetting a bunch, so if I missed your favorite, just let me know in the comments. All right, so let's take a quick look at I can hear the beginning of my phrases popping out, which doesn't really sound great. So let's increase the attack all the way to zero to catch those quicker. Get some players that have really awesome legato. I'm sure I'm forgetting a bunch, so if I missed your favorite. You can hear what the attack control does by increasing or decreasing it. Attack is the time it takes for the compressor to kick in and releases how long the audio is compressed before it returns to its original state. Let's take a quick look at some players that have really awesome legato. I'm sure I'm forgetting a bunch, so if I missed your favorite, just let me know in the players that have really awesome legato. For vocal, a quick attack and release is usually a good call. Now let's bring the threshold back to zero and begin increasing it so we have an amount of compression that sounds good. So if I missed your favorite, just let me know in the comments. All right, so let's take a quick look at some players that have really awesome legato. I'm sure I'm forgetting a bunch, so if I missed your favorite, just let me know in the comments. All right, so let's take a quick look at some players that have really awesome legato. I'm sure I'm forgetting a bunch, so if I missed your favorite, just let me know in the comments. All right, so let's take a Lastly, you can think of ratio as the intensity of the compression. So if it sounds too heavy handed, try reducing the ratio. Let's take a quick look at some players that have really awesome legato. I'm sure I'm forgetting a bunch, so if I missed your favorite, just let me know in the comments. All right, so let's take a quick look at some so like with the previous plugins, let's A, B the before and after and adjust the gain in the plugin to compensate for any level change and for a better comparison. If I missed your favorite, just let me know in the comments. All right, so let's take a quick look at some players that have really awesome legato. The last tool I'm going to use is reverb. This just depends on your preference, but I personally feel like my vocal is a little dry and unnatural sounding in this case. Let's add a bit of reverb to make it sound more like I'm in a physical space, like a room. Start by turning up the mix high to hear the effect of the reverb, and then scroll through the different presets. I'm sure I'm forgetting a bunch, so if I missed your favorite, just let me know in the comments. All right, so let's see some players that have really awesome legato. I'm sure I'm so if I missed your favorite, just let me know in the comments. All right, so let's take a quick look at some players that have really awesome legato. I'm sure let's take a quick look. Once you find a preset that sounds good to you, reduce the mix knob to where you no longer notice the reverb effect. Look at some players that have really awesome legato. I'm sure I'm forgetting a bunch, so if I missed your favorite, just let me know in the comments. And finally, A, B to hear how much of a difference it makes and increase or decrease the mix to taste. That have really awesome legato. I'm sure I'm forgetting a bunch, so if I missed your favorite, just let me know in the comments. All right, so let's take a quick look at some players that have really awesome legato. All right, so let's take a quick look at some players that have really awesome legato. I'm sure I'm forgetting a bunch, so if I missed your favorite, just let me know in the comments. All right, so let's take a quick look at some players that have really awesome legato. I'm sure I'm so let's take a quick look at some players that have really awesome legato. I'm sure I'm forgetting a bunch, so if I missed your favorite, just let me know in the comments. All right, so let's take a quick look at some players that have really awesome legato. I'm sure I'm forgetting a bunch, so if I missed your favorite, just let me know in the comments. Even if you use a dedicated audio mixing program for tasks like this, it can be a great time saver to do everything in Premiere if you're mixing audio for video. You can also actually use your third-party plugins in Premiere if they come in VST format. Just navigate up to File, Preferences, and click Audio. Then click Audio Plugin Manager and click Scan for Plugins. Enable the plugins that you'd like to use and then hit OK to all open windows. Now when you go to add a plugin, hover over the VST section and you'll see your third party plugins available for use. Use the faders to balance the levels of your different audio tracks and maybe consider adding a limiter to your master track to ensure audio doesn't clip or distort if there are any sudden spikes in volume. So anyways, that about wraps up today's tutorial. I know it was a lot of information, but just try following the steps I described, even if you don't fully understand the plugins. And as always, do what you think sounds best. If this video was helpful, please drop it a like and subscribe for more. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.